Today, the corporate kingdom finally comes to an end. There's a new sheriff in town, and accountability will be the order of the day. So as all of you know, we uh, made the decision uh, last year uh, to go in a different direction with respect to how Disney is governed. And since the 1960s, they've enjoyed privileges unlike any company or individual in the state of Florida has ever enjoyed. Uh, they, of course, controlled their own government uh, right here in central Florida. Uh, they had exemptions from laws that everybody else uh, had to follow, uh, and they were able to get huge amounts of benefits without paying their fair share of taxes and even racked up $700 million worth of municipal debt. So we had a, a little bit of a tussle last year over uh, school legislation, and, and Disney came out uh, against something that was really just about protecting young kids and making sure that students are able to go to school learning to read, write, add, and subtract, and not having a teacher tell them that they can change their gender. And I think most parents agree with that. Uh, but, you know, that was only a mild annoyance. I think that what we came to realize after that dust settled on that uh, was you clearly had a movement within the corporation itself, of course, Burbank, California-based elements of it, that said it's their job or it's their goal to inject a lot of this sexuality into the programming for young kids. And I'm a dad, six, four, and two, and my wife and I, and I know parents throughout Florida, uh, we want our kids to be kids. We want them to be able to enjoy entertainment, school, uh, without having an agenda imposed upon them. And so if you're going that way as a corporation, uh, those are not the values that we want to promote in the state of Florida. Uh, we want to promote uh, the safety of our students and uh, the rights of our parents. So we had this situation here that was basically indefensible from a policy perspective. How do you give one theme park its own government and then treat all the other theme parks differently? And so we believe that um, that, that was not good policy. We believe being joined at the hip with this one California-based company was not something that was justifiable or sustainable. And so we said we we're going to do something about it. And so now we're basically, Disney's going to be treated like SeaWorld is treated or like any of these others. And that's really uh, the, the, the fair thing to do. So I'll be signing the bill momentarily, and that will officially end the self-governing status uh, here in Central Florida for Disney. You know, one of the things when, 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 when COVID hit, you know, I was like, you know, these parks, I remember when Disney closed and then, you know, we started working like, you guys need to open back up. And actually SeaWorld opened quickly and, and Universal Disney took a little longer. Uh, but, you know, they were doing a lot of COVID restrictions and, and, and different things like forcing the young kids to wear masks. And then as we got into 2021, you know, a lot of these Disney employees would come out. They just see me at like Wawa or something and say, hey, I'm going to lose my job at Disney because of the vax, MNRA vax mandates uh, for COVID. And, you know, that was not something that we thought was acceptable in the state of Florida. And so we were able to call a special session of the legislature and to provide legislation to say, you can't lose your job based on not taking the shot. And we did that not just for Disney, but for everybody. But some of the stuff with, with COVID and Disney, I mean, it's not unique to Disney. I think we had elites in this country spin different narratives and corporate America largely bought those hook, line, and sinker. Um, you know, they, were, they said that lockdowns would stop the spread, that it was false. They said mat cloth masks would stop the spread, that was false. They said school closures were somehow no big deal, that kids wouldn't miss a beat, uh, and they were wrong about that. They said MNRA vaccines would mean you would not get COVID if you took the shot. They were wrong about that. They denied the existence of things like natural immunity for people that had recovered from COVID. They were wrong about that. And they lampooned and ridiculed anybody who said that this, uh, this COVID came from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And they were wrong about that because we know it did come from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. So when you have 
narratives and a current thing that's always put out there, and then you have all these powerful corporations adopting that and then imposing that, you know, in some respects, they're exercising public power. Uh, they're exercising power over our society by colluding uh, to, to enforce that current thing. And I can't think of very many things these people were right on with respect to the COVID stuff uh, over the last few years. And I'm just happy to say that uh, when we were standing here all by our lonesome in Florida, we were willing to fight back. And really, we helped lead the way uh, back to sanity. So. Um, <laughs> So uh, I'm going to put my John Hancock on this piece of legislation. That'll, that'll make it official. And so just look at your watch, and you'll know at what time the corporate kingdom finally came to an end. Okay, it is in the books right here. Yeah.